back to another episode of Top Dogs. It is Tuesday, December 6th. My name is Rob Dosser. I am joined here by my producer and I guess my co-host. I think we can call you co-host now, Tristan. It's Tristan Tucker. Uh, what's yeah. going on, man? How you doing? How's everything? Doing pretty good. Got to cover a four-overtime victory the other day, so that was pretty fun. I oh, so you were, yeah, that, for people that don't know, that was NC State and um, um, it was uh, Nebraska. Nebraska, right? Yep. That was wild. What was that game like? Uh, it was crazy. Uh, I mean, uh, it was cool to see uh, Darion get on with uh, Jeff um, on the post game show after. But yeah, no, just getting to watch that was crazy. I mean, it was literally three halves of basketball back to back to back. I kind of didn't want it to end. Like once it got to four overtimes, I was like, all right, now like we got to see, like you got to go to like seven, eight, nine overtime. Let's see, let's continue this thing. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Got to see some uh, NBA talent too. Uh, it was really cool to see Alonzo Verge uh, in person. He's such a such a talented player. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, hopefully we'll see games that are uh, as close to a site as exciting um, with UConn this week. We have a trip to Morgantown to take on West Virginia, and we get the Bonnies in Newark on a neutral court uh, Saturday. I believe that's a two o'clock tip off, which is not going to be an ideal situation to, to play two of the toughest non-conference games, considering the injuries that UConn is currently facing. Adama Sonogo has got an abdominal injury. And we'll be out for, I believe it's like two weeks around there, maybe a month. Depends on uh, on how quick yeah. he heals, I guess. And Tyrese Martin, who's going to be joining us on the show uh, in just a couple of minutes. Um, he is dealing with a wrist injury. We'll talk to him a little bit more about that. You're going to hear from him uh, in a second. But I think, Tristan, tell me, tell me if you think I'm crazy here. I think that this, if maybe I'm just kind of looking at it through roast into the clocks glasses but i don't think this is the worst thing in the world if you look at it from the, the perspective of this is going to force the young kids to play minutes and to have to be grown-ups and, and big boys and roles that they weren't necessarily uh playing in before i think we're going to see more jordan hawkins kind of taking over um, a little bit more of a lead role offensively we're going to have to see samson johnson come out there and play major minutes against big physical front lines and old uh veteran front courts um, we're going to have to see Rasul Diggins come in and play some serious minutes uh, in the backcourt. We're going to see a cook, a cook being put into a role that we haven't seen him really uh, have to play um, for extended minutes uh, at this point this season. So I don't, honestly, I, I think you could, if you look at this from the silver linings perspective, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. No, I don't think so at all either. Um, I was actually about to say the same thing. Um, you talked a lot of last week about, you know, needing to see Jordan Hawkins get that expanded role. Uh, kind of play that James Book Knight role, kind of grow into that off the bench. And you said that was going to be the X factor, and I totally agree. And, I mean, obviously injuries are never fortunate, but we've talked about so much this whole season about how this depth is insane. Now you're going to get to test that depth. Um, and especially with the young guys, too, um, like what better test than a road game? Uh, I want to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say this is going to be their first, like true road game with fans in stadiums, right? I mean, this is going to be the first time since like March 2020 that UConn's played a true road game, right? Yeah. So, yeah, for it those is. guys, oh, it is. I mean, that's a great point. And and for some of them, we have sophomores on this team that have never played, yeah, uh, in a road environment like that. Tyrese Martin is a senior, and he's never played a road game in front of fans for UConn, yeah. and he's not going to get a chance here. But you get the point. Yeah. So I mean, definitely, and I mean. West Virginia, too. I mean, this is going to be a defensive clash. So, yeah, I mean, this is just going to be a great opportunity for all of them, really. Yeah. So for West Virginia, let's talk about them a little bit, because they're not exactly what you uh, typically expect out of a West Virginia team. Um, they're, they're pressing a little bit more this year than they did last season. Uh, but this is definitely kind of like the, a pace and space. We're going to get up threes. We have scores on our team as opposed to being like the junkyard dogs, physical big front courts uh, that maybe you are necessarily used to expecting. The best player is Taz Sherman, uh, yeah. leading scorer, uh, Juco transfer, big time wing. Um, and they also got a kid named Sean McNeil. Everyone's going to remember him from his performance in the tournament against Syracuse uh, when he went nuts. But like they got two of the, the better shooters um, in the Big 12 on their roster. Uh, Malik Curry is a senior transfer um, at the point that is going to come in there. And they got a kid named Jalen Bridges, who is uh, he's, he's, he's kind of on that Jalen, uh, I'm sorry, on that James book night uh, growth trajectory, I guess is the way to phrase it uh, in yeah. the sense that he was a freshman that was kind of under, under appreciated coming out of high school, 
but like what he's been doing since he got um, since the season started has really uh, caught the eye of a lot of um, NBA scouts. And, and he's, he's definitely one of those, I hate this cliche breakout players, but he's definitely one of those guys that's a kind of a breakout star in college basketball. So they're a good team. Yeah. Um, they're not, they're not necessarily as good as some of the past uh, West Virginia teams that we've seen, but they're, they're a very, very good basketball team. They're still going to get up on you. Um, and I mean, I mentioned earlier, it's a defensive clash. And I mean, even though they don't have, you know, the same kind of bully ball front court as even, you know, last year, um, they're, they play some really good on ball defense. I was, I, was trying, I was kind of taking a look at the numbers uh, earlier and I was shocked at how great their steal rate versus like their foul rate is. I mean, their on ball defense is just fantastic. And obviously at the forefront of that is Taz Sherman, who has been a joy to watch uh, the last couple of years, just how he's grown um, very much, you know, most improved trajectories, averaging 21 a game this year. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a true test for sure. Yeah. I actually think UConn matches up pretty well with them. Uh, so much of what, uh, West Virginia has are these like talented wing players. And even without Tyrese Martin, what UConn ha has are long athletic dudes on the wing that can kind of give some of these shooters a little bit of trouble. So um, combine that with the fact that they are outside of the top 300 in offensive rebounding percentage, despite playing against a bunch of no names. Yeah. Um, it, it, the UConn should be able to get to the offensive glass, should be able to get, even though Tyrese and, and um, Adama aren't there, they should be able to get second chance opportunities they should be able to slow down West Virginia's best players they should be able to, to turn the ball over a little bit um, what I will say is this it's going to be another ugly game yeah you know, two teams that are kind of built on their defense and built on forcing turnovers it's going to be a, another not pretty basketball game so just kind of like I, I want I want that to be the expectation going in so when all of yeah. you fans start going nuts on uh, on Twitter and start getting in my mentions that, that this is this is what it's going to be it's going to be ugly you're playing West Virginia team without two of your top three or four players it's going to be an ugly basketball game. Mentally, get yourself ready for that. It's going to be ugly. Okay, now that we got that out of the way. Uh, the Bonnies are really good as well. Um, what I will say about the Bonnies is that they are, I think they're going to be missing Kyle Lofton. I'm going to tell yeah, you that are. right now as we're doing this live. But he has been out for a little while. And like he's really, really important to what they do in terms of kind of being a lead guard. Um, he is not, he did not play against Buffalo. Yeah, so we missed their last game, um, and I believe he is not expected to play uh, this week for him at all, which is a big blow. He's a, he's a really, really good veteran leader. We had a segment on one of the After Dark shows earlier this season. Uh, it was uh, Terrence Oglesby, Jeff Goodman, and myself breaking down the best point guards in college basketball. Jeff Goodman called, uh, called, called him one of the top three point guards in college basketball, kind of put it in perspective. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think you're kind of catching them at a good time. Um, I think they fell out of the top 25 this week. Um, but I mean, even when they had Lofton, I don't think they're necessarily a very deep team. Uh, their rotation was always limited to about seven players, if I'm not mistaken. So I think you're catching them at a good time, especially with uh, this purported depth, you know, that we've talked about for so long with UConn. Um, I think they also match up pretty well there. And I, I think this should be dare I say it, maybe an easier game than, or maybe a less ugly game, ideally, than West Virginia. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be pretty, but I do think, again, it's something where UConn matches up fairly well with them. I, I, yeah. When, when, you, when you're losing your best player and the best player is a guy who, uh, who has the ball in his hands as much as Kyle Lofton has the ball in his hands, um, it's going to be something where you can kind of take advantage of that when you play defense the way that, that UConn, in an ideal world, is going to play defense. So, um, it's not great playing these two games uh, significantly shorthanded, but I do think that they're both winnable despite the injuries. And I think that, like I said before, giving a chance to get some of these young guys kind of just thrown into the fire, right? Yeah. You don't really have a choice, but to throw them in the fire. So um, it's put up or shut up time for some of those, uh, those young guys. Well, I, I shouldn't say put up or shut up, but it's let, let, let's see what you got. If you're going to be a part of the team and, and a significant part of the rotation this year and play the role we want you to play, Now's the time that you can show that you can do that. But anyway, Tristan, look, let's get to that interview uh, with Tyrese Martin. This one was fun, man. I think Sounds you guys great. are going to enjoy it. Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, Withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. 
Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins, and North Carolina's Shimon Williams, and Michigan's Stu Douglas, and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. And now let me welcome on to Top Dog's UConn senior forward, Tyrese Martin. Tyrese, what's going on, man? Thanks for being here. What's up, man? It's a pleasure to be here and join you today. So this is your second season at UConn, but it's your first season with fans actually in the stands and having something of a normal college basketball year. So have you gotten a chance to experience what Gamble is like when, when it's full and packed and, and rowdy yet? Uh, yeah, I'd say the first home game of the season was probably the most packed it's been, knowing like the fans wanted to were excited to get back in Gamble. So that's probably been the most full home game we had this season yet. Was it what you expected in terms of being loud? Definitely was crazy in there. I definitely – I like that because I'm more of a player that likes to engage with the fans after big plays and things like that. Like other, I got some teammates that don't like to do that, but I'm one that's going to engage with the fans for sure. Yeah, not just the fans. I see you staring at the camera after dunks too. Oh, yeah, I like to do it for the people watching. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that pose in, right? Um, is it starting to get back to normal on campus? Like do you feel like you're getting a tr- – I don't know what a true UConn experience is, but is it – is it more back to being like a normal college life? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, last year was rough. I mean, nobody was really on campus but athletes and things like that. But this year, like, just to know, like, you could walk around, you just see more people, classroom settings, um, just college experience in general. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving that it's back. It's not as lonely, huh? No, nah, definitely not. Last year was a lonely year. Yeah, one of the things we kept hearing about last season was how the isolation kind of impacted and and affected different people. And I think that was uh, probably a little bit more difficult for someone that was in your specific situation. Uh, You, you, at the start of the pandemic, you basically up and moved to a new school where you didn't necessarily know as many people. Maybe you didn't have as many friends. Maybe you weren't as close with some of the guys on the team. So um, how, how difficult was that getting acclimated to a new environment and new surroundings and new teammates and a new school when you couldn't, when you had to follow like all the protocols that were in place? Well, it was tough. I mean, I didn't know COVID and the way things ended when that year before things got shut down and know things were going to, how long things were going to be with the um, quarantine situations and not being outside and things like that. I didn't know how long that was going to be. So going into the transfer portal after leaving Rhode Island was scary kind of say. So like it was a lot of recruiting during the phone and things like that. I couldn't really go see places. So like I kind of like narrowed my list down to like coaches I was familiar with and things like that. And it just made like absolute sense to just come to UConn knowing my familiar, being familiar with Coach Hurley and being that UConn wasn't that far from home either and being recruited from Kamani and Coach Moore before. So like it all just kind of like worked out in a way. Yeah, I was going to say, was was part of the reason that you ended up there because you had that previous relationship and it was hard to kind of develop. I mean, you can get to know someone over Zoom, but you can't really get to know somebody over Zoom. So was that that, that was a leg up for you kind of that situation, right? Yeah, like put them ahead of others in that situation because, like like you said, I could talk to them on the phone all I want, but, like, can't really get that vibe from someone through the phone and things like that. Like, you really got to catch somebody's vibe and how school feels for you like in person and on business, things like that. So like they definitely had the up one on the other schools in that matter. So you, you were recruited twice by coach Curley and you actually committed to him twice. So what, what, what is it about him that, that kind of attracts you to playing to in his programs and style? Like, what is it about him that, that made you want to commit to two different times? Um, just the style of play and the kind of person he is. And he just brings his just known for bringing his best out of all his players. I mean, he brings this dog out of players that might 
players might not even have that dog in them, but like it looks like he just brings that dog out of them. Like just because he's a dog himself. I mean, so that just like helped with the recruiting and make me want to play for that guy even more. I mean, even both times, but it didn't work out after the first time. I ended up staying committed to Brody, the Brody fans and things like that. But once my time has ended there, it was time to come play for Coach Early. So I got to know, what's the biggest difference between Coach Early, the recruiter, and Coach Early, the coach? Um, coach Early, the recruiter, um, really wants to laugh. He laughs more, you know, <laughs> hold more conversation with him, things like that. But the coach, like, nah, he's not really laughing that much. I mean, it's really rare that you sit down and have conversations with him that, like, you would have as a being a player, being recruited by him, things like that. So, like, that's one of the big differences. But, I mean, it's something understandable. He's a high-level competitor. He wants to win, things like that. So, I like it. Yeah, I was going to say, you have to be – you have to be just as competitive as he is to be able to survive in the environment that he creates in this program. For sure. Yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta match his intensity day in day out or you're going to stand out for sure. So as, as the listening audience probably knows, I don't know if you actually know Tyrese, uh, Andrea Hurley, uh, Dan Hurley's wife hosts a podcast on my network on the field of eight, uh, 68 called ball is wife. So I, I texted her earlier today about you to try to get like a, a good story, try to get something funny. Uh, something we could laugh about uh she said she has no dirt i don't know if that's true maybe she's just being you know loyal and a good friend but uh, she did tell me that when you first got to campus she stopped talking to, to coach hurley for three days to punish him for being too mean to you on zoom calls did you did you know that no i actually didn't know that at all <laughs> <laughs> Do you, she, she she's, she's pretty awesome yeah, she is awesome. I love that lady. I mean, she sticks up for the players a lot. I mean, some of the times where, like, I heard I heard another um, story where, like, um, I had a bad practice and things like that. And we had Big East Media Day, and I wasn't – he was going to leave me back for just practicing bad. So, like, they left during the day, and I ended up getting picked up from a manager at 4 in the morning because his wife, I guess, put in his ear that, why would you leave him, blah, blah, blah. So then somebody came and caught me and took me over there in the morning. But, like, it's things like that. Like, she definitely defends us in certain ways. And he probably doesn't like that, but that's just who he is. But I definitely appreciate her. I find that so funny that she does that. Yeah, she's the, she's definitely the program mother, huh? Yeah, for sure. Looking out for everybody. So, I, you know you know what I'm about to ask you next, and I need your, uh, I need your craziest Danny Hurley story. Crazy story for practice, from the recruiting trail, from a game. You got to give me something good. Craziest story from uh, – he does so many, like, crazy things. Like, just day in and day out, you just see something new. Like, it's hard for me to just stick with a story. Like, he calls he calls you, like, funny names. Like, he just does funny things, like, all the time in practice. Like, they're funny to us. Like, you were able to laugh a little bit. But, like, you guys would look at him like something's wrong with him. Like, think I really, like, off the top of my head right now. Uh, you'll see him. You'll see him um, a lot. People will roll like basketballs at him because like he'll initiate the basketball into the play when we're playing, and he tends to like if somebody's throwing the ball at him, he wouldn't catch it. He'll headbutt it out the way. And <laughs> the dude, he's he hit his head. Like he'll start. We start messing up and being brutal in practice. He'll walk over to the mat, starts banging his head on the mat, and I'm trying to rip his shirt off. And dude, he's just crazy. Like it's a lot of different things he does. Like, if you've seen practices, you would understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's a good thing, though, because you guys can laugh at that afterward. I think it's just a team bonding thing for him. That's got to be what it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what his, what his deal is with that stuff, but I don't mind it. So let, let's talk a little bit about the battle for Atlantis. You guys were in a couple dog fights down there. Um, I thought for the most part that the team played really, really well. Uh, you came a possession away from getting a shot at Baylor in the title game. Uh, you were fouled on that rebound, by the way. I, I don't want you to have to say it. I don't want you to get into trouble, but I'll say it. You were fouled on that rebound. It was bullshit. They didn't give you that call. Um, but you guys had some really, I thought, really impressive and promising performances, uh, but you didn't achieve what I know you guys set out to achieve down there, which was coming back with the Atlantis title. So uh, looking back on it, how how do you feel about that trip and, and how you guys did Um, I felt like we grew a lot in that trip. I mean, knowing we played a lot of bike games leading up to that, of tournaments so we didn't know where we really stood as a team collectively until we finally got challenged with our first game in Auburn and I feel like 
we grew a lot from this last year team, even with same core of people even losing book night. Last year around this time of year, we would have probably lost the overtime game like we did last year against Creighton at home when we were up and things like that. And then you just seen this year, we just overcame adversity, able to stick together and show that toughness and be able to win, make big shots when we needed them. So like that was big in that first Auburn game. You guys can can take a punch with just about anyone. I mean, you were down, what was it? You were down 11 to Auburn and came back with some huge run. You were down by 14 to Michigan State. And like I said, you should have, you probably came back and deserved to win that game. Um, you were down against VCU. Like what what is it about this team that can kind of absorb another team's run and, and come back and keep fighting? Why does that happen? I mean, I think we just take that back to practice. I mean, we practice tough. I mean, practice is always tough day in and day out, and we have to push through that to be able to get through practice the right way, even when things aren't going our way. Even if drills are hard and things like that, we have to be able to fight through to get to the next drill. So I feel like with that, having those days like that all summer, all preseason, like those things, those little things carry over to the game to know when adversity comes, like it's all right, we just got to keep going and our time's going to come. And I feel like that's the mentality that we had going into those games when we were down. I mean, we don't plan on being down, but we do a good job of fighting back and sticking together. And I mean, that just goes to show the togetherness we have with this team. Well, what's the environment in that building like? I've never been to Atlantis, but it actually looks like it, you know, when you get people in there, it's not very big, but it's loud, I'm sure. It's small, it's packed. It, it feels... Looking at it from the outside, it, it looks like a like a crazy high school state tournament kind of a deal. Is that about yeah. right? Thing is, the court is in a ballroom actually, so like the ceiling's not really high, it's low. I mean, it's the fans are like kind of on your back, like after the bench. There's probably a walking aisle, and then the bleachers are right there, and they were filled with fans. I mean, there's ones across from the court too, with the same kind of distance. So like the fans are kind of top of you, and they surprised me with how many fans really traveled this year. I mean, thinking to the Bahamas, I didn't think that much fans would travel for all teams. But, I mean, the fans definitely did show out in Bahamas. Yeah, I'm going to have to get Coach Hurley to let me get a spot on that uh, on that team flight down to the to Atlantis next year. It's uh, not, not it's cold here in, uh, in New Jersey, man. I want to get down to the beach just like you guys. Um, all right, let's talk about the wrist. Uh, do you remember how you heard it, where it happened? Because um, it just – it felt like all of a sudden they're talking about, yeah – Tyrese is uh, wiggling his wrist. He heard it at some point in the game. Do you remember when it happened? Um, yeah, I was um, driving to the basket, the one possession, and then I went up, got fouled, like I fell on it. Um, when I went to go brace my landing, like I went to go brace like this, and I guess I heard it the first time. Then the second time I drove again, ended up falling on it like a couple possessions later. And that time, it took me a long time to get up. And then, like, all I remember hearing is Hurley, like, yelling from the timeout. Like, it was an immediate timeout. He was yelling, like, get up off the floor. Da, da, da. And I, like, I heard that. And I'm like, all right, here you go. So I got up, like, all right, I'm good. Then um, trainer went to go. I don't think I taped it that game. I played without it, the tape, I think. And then got swollen overnight. They told me, like, it was sprained. It's probably sprained. We couldn't get no x-rays or MRIs out there. So we just went with it sprained because of the swelling, and then it swelled up again after the Michigan State game. And then on the flight back, that was when we figured out, like, we're just going to go get an x-ray, MRI, thing like that. And the MRI basically told us what it was. Yeah, so you got a, you got a fracture in there? Is, that what the, what, is it the scaphoid bone or something like that? Yeah, I don't know the bone name. I mean, there's a lot of bones in there I really don't know the name of, but – Definitely, it's a um, fracture, an avulsion fracture, I think. Like a little piece came off with a torn, with not a torn ligament, but a sprained ligament. The ligament pulled the piece of the bone off, I guess. So it's, with a wrist injury, it's not like an ankle injury. Like you can still run. Are you able to stay in shape? Or what, like, what do you, what do you do as you're rehabbing this? Oh yeah, I'm definitely still doing the cardio and things like that. I mean, every day in practice, doing the, the drills that are non-basketball, like our defensive stuff and things like that, I'm still doing those drills and things like that. Still doing bike stuff, um, leg stuff or weights and things like that. So I'm still doing stuff where I'm active, not just sitting around and things like that. So basically you got to do all the conditioning, but you don't get to, to actually play as a reward, huh? Yeah, every time a um, team gets disciplined for losing or messing something up and they have to run the stairs or run the line, I'm there running the stairs with either team, either guy. It doesn't is that matter. by choice or is that something you got to do? No, nah, that's by choice. That's what, yeah, so you, all right, so you're one of those guys then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, I got a source that told me that you love to bowl. So I got to ask, 
Uh, is it handy having all of those wrist guards around now that you have a broken wrist? I mean, it's my left. I don't really bowl my left. So, like, it's I'm good with my right hand. I can bowl with my right. But, yeah, I am a I am a pretty good bowler for a basketball player. My highest is, like, 212. 212. Yeah, that's my highest. The last right, time we went. Are you, like, in the league or something at home? Nah, I just my, – my friends sometimes we just – go bold like but that's not like an everyday thing right if we're bored or something we just chill somebody might go to bowling alley here and there but like, it's not serious but yeah i'm all right bowler <laughs> all right so uh so we got west virginia on wednesday we got the bonnies on saturday we got providence the saturday after that marquette is uh tuesday the 18th and xavier is tuesday the 28th i'm guessing with your injuries what the goal is to be back for for the xavier game you're going to try to get back for providence what is uh What's your ideal timetable here? Yeah, um, I'm definitely aiming back for Big East play, the first game of Big East. I mean, when they told me it was only going to be two to four weeks, I definitely just circled that Providence calendar, game on my calendar. Like, that's the game I'm aiming to come back for. Like, that's the game I want to play. So definitely that's the game I'm aiming to come back for. So I, I was talking with Tristan about this a little bit. I think there's a little bit of a silver lining here with you and Adama being out and that it kind of forces some of these young guys to get thrown into the fire, right? Like Samson hasn't played a ton of minutes. Now he's going to have to play a bunch of minutes. Uh, Jordan Hawkins has played some minutes. He hasn't kind of been that guy, right? He's going to be asked to take more of the scoring load, more of uh, what you were doing. We're going to see more of Rasul Diggins, hopefully. You know, a cook's going to be put in a situation where he kind of has to play Adama's role a little bit. So um, I, I, I do think that there might be a benefit to this long term. I mean, it sucks for you right now, but I think long term, kind of getting those guys force fed into a position where they got it. I mean, you got to put up now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely for sure. I mean, it's not ideal that coach will probably throw freshmen out there for the minutes that me and Adam would play like 30 something, 27 or 30 something minutes a game. It's probably not ideal that he'll put a freshman out there for that many minutes. So like how I look at it is he's probably going to play more guys now that we are out and probably will play faster and guys will be fresh, press longer. So, like, I kind of see benefit of this. Like, I look at it in the positive way of this happening. I mean, I feel like our team's ready. That's the identity we have. And other guys want to play, so it's their time to just show that what they're capable of doing in a big game. I mean, you wouldn't want it anywhere else. All right, so let's talk about Jordan. I think that he has a chance uh, to be a very, very, very good player. Uh, probably pretty soon. I mean, he's got to get stronger. He's got to tighten up that handle a little bit. But I mean, do you do you see that too? Like he he could be a difference maker for you guys this season. No, yeah, I definitely see it every day in practice. I mean, he just scores the ball at a high clip. I mean, he gets to his shot, gets a shot off really fast, and did like you said, just getting stronger and things like that. But I mean, we need him to just be able to make shots right now for us, be able to rebound and guard the ball. I mean, he's pretty. He's holding up all right at that at those spots but I feel like he can get better at that so as long as he's working on that every day in practice by the time we're trying to play our best basketball which comes March hopefully he'll have that situated and he'll be ready to go yeah I'm feeling good about it I think that it will be I'm going to be I'm going to look at that in a positive light all right so the cupcakes are gone every single game rest of the season uh, it's going to be a grinder and what do you what are you looking forward to the most over the course of the next three or four months um I'm looking to see how this team will be able to handle prosperity. I mean, we know right now we're ranked 15. I mean, coming off two wins, I mean, we got to start over. But when we get to start winning these games, just not getting complacent and keep fighting and sticking to what we do, I mean, I feel like that's something I want to see this team be able to do. And we have the older guys where we should be able to lead the right way to show the younger guys, like, not to get complacent and things like that. So, I mean, that's one thing I'm really looking forward to seeing. That's how we handle prosperity this season. All right. So uh, we end these pods with a three-point play. So I'm going to ask you three quick hitter questions. You got to answer them. I'm putting you on the spot. You got to give me uh, got to give me something of these. All right. First one. You told me at Big East Media Day that you're old, so you're not necessarily a dunker anymore. You're kind of a layup guy. So you're out of the, out of the picture for this question. I want to know who is the best dunker on the team. Is it Andre? Is it Samson? Is it Jordan? Is it anybody else? Andre, for sure. Is Andre? What's the yeah, craziest I, thing you've seen him do in practice? Um, I'm, just, I'm not going to put the guys out there, but just know he has a he has a lot of crazy bodies in practice. <laughs> I, I just imagine him doing this a lot in practice, right? Uh, he doesn't really – that's not a guy that really celebrates 
things like that after big plays like that either, like I was saying earlier. So, like, he's not one of them. He'll probably scream or something, but he's really, like, calm. Like, he's probably in his head, like, wow, I just did that. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, you would have been the guy that would be walking down the court doing this. Right? Yeah, I'm going to know, <laughs> like, for sure. All right, number two, uh, where is the best place to eat on UConn's campus? I'm going to go with, for me, I'm going to go with Gansett Raps. All right, last one I got for you. Uh, Coach Hurley, all offseason, wall potential was like one of the buzzwords uh, that he kept putting out. They're talking about all the players on the wall, which means I know that you've seen these guys every day when you walk into practice. So I want your all-time UConn starting five. And while you think about it, I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to take Khalid al at the point. I'm going to take Ray Allen at the two. I'm going to take Ben Gordon. I'm going to go with a three-guard lineup. I'm going to put Charlie Villanueva at the four, and I got to go with my guy, Mecca Okafor, at the five. You think you got a five that can beat that? I'm going to go Kemba at the one, Ray Allen at the two. I'm going to stick with Ben Gordon at the three, and Mecca Okafor at the four, and Andre Jumman at the five. So you're going big, huh? Super size yeah. lineup. Yeah. Yeah, that, fit, that fits. Uh, that, that would be a Dan Hurley team. That fits. That fits Dan Hurley well. Listen, Tyrese, this was fun, man. I appreciate the time. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me.